So in this video I'm going to take a look at some characteristic graphs of different materials. So I'm going to start off looking at characteristic stress strain curves and then I'm going to move on to look at characteristic loading curves. So first of all a stress strain curve. So there's some key points you can see on these and I want to identify them. So this region down here, this straight section is from what we've looked at before you should recognize as somewhere that Hooke's law can be applied. So we're applying that to this straight section here up to this point the limit of proportionality. So this should be nothing new for you. Goodness me, this is a long word. Ah, taking so long. Okay. So the next key point is this one here. This point here is called the elastic limit. So it's if you go beyond this point, the material is going to be permanently deformed and not return to its original shape. So we've got this next one here. This one here, just before a sudden drop in stress, is called the yield point. So this is when the material actually yields and it's well on its way to fracturing. And we've got this last one here, which is the, where it's actually completely fractured. So it's called the fracture stress or the breaking stress sometimes as well. And what you would recognize from this graph is that this would actually be the same as the ultimate tensile stress, as that's the maximum stress it can take. So let's have a look at some for different types of materials, different material properties. So there's a distinction to be made here between brittle materials, and which are types of materials that don't deform plastically, they just fracture once you reach the yield point, and there are ductile materials which can go past the elastic limit for quite a long period of time. Okay, so let's have a look at the brittle type graph. This is a stress strain graph here. So what you'd expect to see is you'd go past the limit of proportionality here, you'd reach the elastic limit, and then bam, breaks. No plastic deformation whatsoever going on there. So we look at it for a ductile material. Again, we've got this straight section here where it tapers off and it stops being proportional and then you just get this long drawn out section here so it deforms plastically for a long period of time which is, makes it a ductile material so this is the stress strain graph so let's have a look at some loading curves or force extension curves all right, so let's have a look at this one for metal, and I'll draw your attention to some key features. So like I said, we've got a force extension graph. And what we've got is it going up here, so it's in the proportional section. It has gone past the elastic limit, probably somewhere around here, and it's finally stopped being extended here. So at this point, the force is, remo is removed, so it's unloaded, and it goes back down this one here, so when there's zero force, when it's completely unloaded, we can see that it has been permanently extended down here. So this blue one is the loading section, and this red dashed line here is the unloading section. Now if you remember, the area under the graph is the uh, amount of energy you've stored in the material. So if you get these two different curves, you've got different amounts of energy. So the area under this blue line is the amount of energy it takes to stretch out the material and the area under this red line is the amount of energy you get back when you release the force on it. So what you've got actually is this area here which is energy that's been used to deform the material so it's been used to alter the structure of the material. So like I said, I was going to draw your attention to a couple of key points. So if you're asked to sketch one of these, the unloading line should be parallel to the proportional section. So in terms of what I'm looking at here, 
This line here is your proportional section here, and your unloading line should be parallel to that. So when you're sketching these or maybe drawing on a graph, it should be looking something like this, and it's I've seen it in exam questions where you're asked to draw the unloading line, and one of the things they were looking for is that it was parallel to the original section. Okay, so let's move on to look at a different material. So we're going to take a look at elastic or a rubber type of material. So you can see here, first of all, from the fact that it returns to the same point, this rubber has not gone past the yield point. If any of you have stretched out elastic bands beyond the elastic limit, um, you'll find that they break very quickly once you actually get to that point. So this one has stayed within the elastic limit. And so we've got this blue loading curve again. And then when it is released and the is reduced, you've got this unloading one. So yet again, we've actually lost some energy. So if you're using things like rubber bands as cat spots and stuff, you'll hear a loud twanging noise, so some energy might be released as not sound energy, and you obviously will probably get some heat energy too. So that this here accounts for lost energy in between loading it and unloading it. So nothing in this world is 100% efficient at transferring energy. So if you're asked to sketch a characteristic graph, that's what they are looking for here, the unloading line being below the loading line showing that some energy is lost. Finally, we'll look at polymer type materials. So an example would be a polythene. So let's have a look at the key things here. So we've got this loading curve here, so we're increasing the force on it and looking at this extension. So Clearly here we can see it's plastically deformed as it's not returned to its original length. So a couple of key things. There's an awful lot of energy used in this deformation. So we can't get back too much energy from this deformation. And again, just as before, if we look at this line here, and this line here, you should find that the unloading section that we've got over here on the red should be about parallel to this original section here. 